Hello everyone. Uh, hello everyone. Today we are going to start with the fourth uh, chapter, or I would say module three over here. Now, uh, the topic that we are going to discuss today is the characteristics of uh, what is a FIR or finite impulse response fil digital filters. Now, FIR, as you can see over here, it stands for uh, finite impulse response. Now, FIR filters are called as non-recursive because they do not uh, use any feedback. Now, before studying, uh, what do you say? Um, or the design of FIR filters, we'll discuss one important characteristic of your FIR filter. Now, the FIR filter are inherently, what do you say, stable. So we'll just have a quick, uh, what do you say, review of what do we mean by that. Uh, now, we know that an LSI system, LSI is, uh, what do you say, least, uh, uh, least not, sorry, linear shift uh, invariant system. Uh, now, we uh, the linear shift invariant system is said to be stable uh, if bounded input uh, provides bounded output that is nothing but BBO. Now, we have the difference equation of an FIR filter which is given by uh, y of n which is equals to m minus 1 summation sorry summation k equals to 0 to m minus 1 b of k into x of n minus k. Now, taking the z transform of this equation over here, it transforms into y of z which is equals to summation k equals to 0 to m minus 1 b of k into z of minus k x of z. Now, the transfer function uh, uh, h of z is equals to is given by y of z upon x of z over here. So, uh, then from the, therefore from the equation uh, h of z yeah, h of z which is equals to y of z which is now equals to the previous equation over here that is uh, that was the one which we to, uh, which we received after performing the z transform which is given by summation k equals to 0 to m minus 1 b of k z raised to minus k. Now taking the inverse z transform of the equation we have h of n which is equals to b of n uh, uh, which is equals to b of n if your value of cho to n is uh, ranging from 0 to m minus 1 and the value is 0 otherwise. Now Expanding the above equation, we get y of n, which is equals to, uh, what do you say, uh, this equation, equ uh, uh, expanding this equation, we get y of n, which is equals to b0 uh, into x raised to n, plus, uh, what do you say, b1 into x uh, x uh, of n, mi n minus 1, plus, uh, what do you say, b b2 into x of n minus 2, up till b of m minus 1, into x of n minus m plus 1 over here. Now, using the above equation over here, that we have received, we can equate it the, uh, what do you say, the equation to y of n, which is equals to uh, h of 0 into x of n plus h of 1 into x of n minus 1 up till h of m minus 1 into x of h minus m plus 1. Now, here your h of 0, h of 1 are constants over here. That means they are bounded. Now, the equations, uh, the equation over here, uh, in this equation over here, the output will be bounded if we uh, apply uh, bounded input. That means for every bounded input, the output of FIR filter is bounded. Hence, we say that FIR filters are inherently stable. Now, uh, we'll uh, go in a little bit detail uh, over here and we are going to study some properties. Now, over here, uh, there is a topic called as constant group and phase delay. So now, what do we mean by that? Uh, let's study. The topic is, uh, the question has been asked in such a way that uh, define group delay and phase delay. Uh, so for FIR filter, this is the standard equation that you need to remember in Z transform uh, format. It is given from summation n equals to 0 to m minus 1 h of n into Z raised to minus n. Now, to obtain the magnitude and the phase response, we put Z which is equal to e raised to j omega. Now, h of e raised to j omega is, is equal to summation n equals to 0 to m minus 1 h of n into e raised to j into omega now here the phase response is given by uh, phase of omega uh, phi of omega which is equals to tan inverse of imaginary part of uh, uh, h of e raised to j omega and real part of h of e raised to j omega now the group delay is uh, the group delay is the delayed response of a filter as a function of frequency omega the phase delay that is nothing but tau p and the group delay tau s are given by tau p is equals to uh, what do you say the phase delay is given by minus of 5 into omega minus phi of omega upon the actual uh, what is a mod of omega and your tau g that is nothing but your group delay is given by minus or uh, is equal to, uh, is equal to minus d a uh, derivative of of uh, phi of omega up, uh, with respect to d of omega now the parameter tau is a constant phase delay parameter and it is given by tau is equals to m minus 1 upon 2 now if 
द फेज वट यू से If the phase delay and the group delay are constant, then such filters are called as linear phase filters. The condition for linear phase, ah, uh, in terms of delay parameter, is given as phi of omega, which is equals to minus of omega into tau. Similarly, in terms of filter length, the condition for uh, what do you say? Um, the condition for uh, linear phase is h of n. Just a moment, da, beta. Hmm. The condition is given by h of n, which is equals to h of m minus one minus n. Now, if only constant group delay is considered, then the linear phase condition is given by h of n, which is equals to minus of h into uh, minus of h of m minus n minus one. Now, what are we? What do we mean by these equations over here? These two equations will have a quick, uh, what do you say, look via a graphical method. Now, the magnitude specification of your FIR filter is shown over here, where your uh, a graph is being depicted over here. Just a moment, da, beta. Ha. The graph is being depicted over here, wherein your uh, daba p is given as a uh, p. pass band deviation your daba s is given as stop band deviation your omega p is given as your pass band edge uh, edge frequency your uh, omega s is given as what do you say uh, stop band edge frequency your delta f is given as a transition width which is given as omega s minus omega p upon 2 pi now if you see over here the graph is somewhat uh, Uh, what do you say? Similar to the one which we had seen for the filter response, or I would say filter output, wherein this was uh, this part is known as the pass band, and this part was known as the stop band. If you see any variation over here, that means those are nothing but ripples. So these are the ripples in pass band, hence the name pass band ripples, and these are the what do you say ripples in the stop band, hence the name stop band ripples. Now. The magnitude specification of FIR filter can be written as one minus daba p. Uh, your h of uh, omega lies between one minus daba p and one plus daba p over here. Uh, for your omega, uh, which lies between zero to omega p, and your h of omega uh, lies between zero to daba s. For your omega, which lies between omega s to pi. Now. these are the magnitude specifications for the phase response we have assumed a linear phase now therefore while uh, designing the fir filter over here uh, the symmetry of the filter is indicated now general filter what do you say uh, coefficient over here uh, this is a little bit mathematical uh, terminology that we are going to discuss now the fir and iir filters are basically linear shift invariant uh, what do you say systems which are characterized by unit sample response now the fir system has finite duration unit sample response as follows your h of n is equals to 0 for uh, n uh, which is less than 0 and n greater than equals to uh, capital m over here now the fir system is non recursive system it means it depends only on the past and the present input the difference equation of the lsi system is given as y of n which is equals to minus of summation uh, from k equals to 1 uh, to m a of k into y of n minus k plus summation k equals to 0 to m into b of k x of n minus k now the first term represents the past outputs and the second term over here represents the past and the present input hence the difference uh, equation of the fir filter system is y of n which is equals to summation k equals to 0 to m b of k into x into n minus k now if we consider m coefficients then uh, your y of n is equals to your y of n is equals to summation k equals to 0 to uh, what do you say m minus 1 into b of k into x of n minus k now taking z transform of both the sides your y of z is equals to summation k equals to 0 to m minus 1 b of k into z raised to minus k x of z so therefore your y of z upon x of z uh, uh, this x of z is being taken over here so it becomes uh, h of z which is equals to summation uh k of k equals to 0 to m minus 1 bk into z raised to minus k now we had said that x upon y upon uh, y of z upon x of z is nothing but your h of z so which is a system function of fir system hence from these two equation from 4 and from 5 we say that your uh, h of z over here is nothing but summation k equals to 0 to m minus 1 into uh, what do you say 
ऑफ बी ऑफ के इन टू जेड ऑफ माइनस के टेकिंग द जेड इनवर्स ऑफ वट इज से ऑफ दिस इक्वेशन वी गेट दैट इज नथिंग बट द यूनिट सैम्पल रिस्पॉन्स ऑफ द एफ आई आर सिस्टम एज एच ऑफ एन विच इज इक्वल टू समेशन एच ऑफ एन द वैल्यू ऑफ एच ऑफ एन इज बी ऑफ एन वेन यू एन लाइफ बिटवीन जीरो टू एम माइनस वन एंड इट इज जीरो अदरवाइज नाउ विच गिव द फिल्टर कोइफिशन दैट मीन्स इट रिप्रेजेंट जनरल फिल्टर कोइफिशन इक्वेशन नाउ देर इज अ टॉपिक कॉल्ड एज मिनिमम फेज मैक्सिमम फेज एंड मिक्स फेज वॉट आर दीज लेट्स डिस्कस बेटा ना कंसिडर टू एफ आई आर सिस्टम्स ओवर यर कंसिडर टू एफ आई आर सिस्टम्स ओवर यर विच हैव वट यू से जस्ट अ मोमेंट है बेटा Yes. Uh, consider two FIR systems over here. Uh, H of uh, H one of Z, which is equals to Z plus half upon Z, and H two of Z is nothing but uh, half of Z plus one upon Z. Now, the first system H one of Z uh, has zero at Z equals to minus half, as you can see from over here, and the second system H two of Z has zero at Plus one z uh, plus one, which is equals to zero. That means z equals to two minus two. Thus, there uh, there is a reciprocal relation between the zeros of the two systems. As you can see over here, it is quite simple, beta. One ka ko zero minus half pe hai, or one ka minus two pe. These two are nothing but the reciprocal of each other. Now we'll calculate magnitude and phase response of the two systems. Now. The magnitude response is given by we know that the magnitude response is obtained by putting z equals to e raised to j omega and by taking the magnitude of that function. Now h one of j omega is given as uh, what do you say? We replace z by e raised to minus j omega, so it becomes e raised to minus j omega plus half upon e raised to minus j omega. Now this one is uh, expanded using the Euler's identity, so it becomes cos of omega minus j of sine omega plus half upon cos of omega minus uh, what do you say j of sine omega. Therefore, if we take a mod sine over here, so we take an under root. Uh, what do you say? We take under root and uh, we take a square under that. So it is nothing but uh, what do you say? Half. We take the square of the real terms. That is nothing but half plus cos of omega ka square plus sine square omega. And over here we have uh, what do you say? Uh, cos square omega plus sin square omega. Now, as you can see over here, h of uh, h one of omega. Uh, what do you say? Is uh, just a moment, brother. Let me adjust. Hmm. H one of uh, what do you say? Omega is given by under root of. One by four plus cos of omega plus cos square omega plus sine square omega upon one, which turns out to be one uh, upon four. Uh, one by four plus cos omega plus one. Therefore, h one of omega uh, mod of h one of omega turns out to be under root of five by four plus cos of uh, what do you say omega over here. Now, h two of omega. Let's uh, solve it for h two of omega. Uh, we replace z by e raised to j minus j omega. So the equation turns out to be half into e raised to minus j omega plus one upon e raised to minus j omega, uh, which then turns out to be half of cos omega minus half of j sine omega. Plus one upon cos of omega minus j sine omega. So now, when you solve it in the similar fashion, you uh, you get a response of h of h two of omega as under root of five by four plus cos uh, cos of pi. Now, so we can say easily that uh, if you compare this, uh, what do you say? Response that is the second uh, equation ka response with the first uh, uh, with the output of the first. Equation that is nothing but h1 of j omega mod of h1 of j omega. We see that both the values are same. Hence, we can easily predict that the magnitude of the response systems is same. This is because h1 of z and h2 of z are reciprocals of each other. Now, we need to understand the phase relationship. Now, how do we obtain the phase relationship? Let's see, beta. Now, it is obtained. By using the relation theta is equals to tan inverse of imaginary upon real part. Now let's phase uh, let phase response of h one of z be theta one of omega. Therefore theta one of omega is nothing but tan inverse of sine omega upon half plus cos omega minus tan inverse of uh, sine omega upon uh, what do you say cos omega. So your uh, j uh, theta one omega. Uh, is given by tan inverse of sine of uh, omega upon uh, half plus uh, cos omega minus tan inverse of tan omega. So your equation of uh, what do you say? This one over here. 
theta 1 omega turns out to be tan inverse of sin omega upon half plus cos omega which is uh, minus omega similarly for h2 of z we get so for h2 of z we have theta 2 now we have theta 2 which is equals to tan inverse of half sin omega upon half cos omega plus 1 minus tan inverse of tan omega so your theta 2 turns out to be tan inverse of sin omega upon cos omega plus 2 minus omega now the plot response for h1 z and h2 z h2 of z are as shown in the figures over here 1 and 2 respectively now if you look carefully beta now just a moment let me adjust now uh, for h1 of z over here as you can see the 0 is uh, for h1 of z over here uh, the 0 is at z1 um, is equals to half uh, that means the 0 is inside the unit circle as shown in the first figure at omega equals to 0 theta 1 equals to 0 and at omega equals to uh, what do you say pi theta 1 is again equals to 0 so thus the net phase change for h1z is nothing but 0 there is no phase change it has re uh, returned back to its original position over here that is nothing but the 0th line or the x coordinate x axis now as shown in uh, what do you say figure 4.2 uh, at omega equals to 0 your theta 2 equals to 0 but when your omega equals to some value say pi your theta 2 is nothing but minus pi over here if you consider this value over here so यहाँ पे आपका 4.4.2 आएगा बेटा sorry हाँ so at this point uh, you can see the graph over here now when your omega is zero your theta two is zero but when your omega is say pi then your theta two का value is minus pi over here therefore the net phase change uh, is nothing but pi over here for this system your zero is at z1 equals to 2 this means that the 0 is outside the unit circle for the first time this is called the first system the one in which there is no phase change or uh, in which the what do you say the 0 is inside the unit circle so uh, in that case uh, over here we say that it is a minimum phase system and the second system over here in which the 0 is outside the unit circle we call it as a maximum phase system. Now the same principle is applicable for IIR filters. In this case if your h of z is having minimum phase then its inverse system h inverse of z is always stable. Alternatively if h of z is stable then h inverse of z has minimum phase. But 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 mixed uh, but mixed phase and maximum phase system result in unstable inverse system what do we mean by that let's grab a numerical so that it becomes easier for us to understand now uh, in the first numerical it has been given that the filter uh, fir filter have an impulse response as given below we need to classify them as minimum phase or maximum phase or mixed phase now your h1 of n is given as 1 0 0.707 and 0 0.25 h2 of n is given as 1 1.414 and 1 and h3 of n is given as 1 minus 5 and 6 so now how to solve such kind of numerical let's see beta your h1 of n is given as 1 0 0.707 and 0 0.25 so we have h1 of z which is equals to summation 0 uh, n equals to 0 to 2 jitne aapke paas you start with uh, what do you say uh, 0th position over here so, it is, uh, so the value of n is ranging from 0 1 2 hence the summation uh, range is from z n equals to 0 to 2 h1 of n into z inverse uh, of n so your h1 of z is equals to 1 plus 0 0.707 z inverse plus 0 0.25 z raised to minus 2 which is equals to 1 plus 0 0.707 z plus 0.25 z square so your h1 of z turns out to be z square plus 0 0.707 z plus uh, 0 0.25 uh, upon z square to determine the location of zeros we will obtain the roots of the numerator terms as z square plus 0 0.707 plus 0 0.25 uh, you can solve it by either using that uh, formula minus b plus or minus underscore b square minus 4 uh, what do you say uh, 2ab upon uh, what do you say uh, 4ab upon uh, that uh, upon uh, twice of ac or something like that the formula but over here you can simply solve it in your scientific calci and you will uh, get the values of this equation as 
माइनस जीरो पॉइंट थ्री सिक्स प्लस जे जीरो पॉइंट थ्री फाइव एंड ओवर इट इज माइनस जीरो पॉइंट थ्री सिक्स माइनस जे जीरो पॉइंट थ्री सिक्स ओवर इयर सो ना सिंस बोथ इफ यू सी दैट द वैल्यू ऑफ ओवर इज नॉट एक्सीडिंग वन दैट मीन्स सिंस बोथ द जीरो आर इन साइड द यूनिट सर्कल दिस इज अ मिनिमम फेस सिस्टम ओवर इयर नाउ विल कंसिडर फॉर एच टू ऑफ एन नाउ Your H two of n is given as one, one point four one four and one. So we have H two of z, which is equals to summation n equals to zero to two. Since we have zero one two ka length of n, so it will be n equals to zero to two H two of n into z inverse of n. H two of z, which is equals to one plus one point four one four z inverse uh, plus z raised to minus two. Which is equals to one plus one point four one four upon z plus one by z square. Therefore, h two of z, which is equals to z square plus one point four one four z plus one uh, upon z square. Now, roots of the numerator turns out to be minus zero point seven zero seven plus j zero point seven zero seven minus uh, what do you say zero point seven zero seven plus j zero point seven zero seven over here. So, in that case. Uh, since the zeros are inside the unit circle, since none of the values are greater than one, we say that this is a minimum phase system over here. Now, you have the third impulse response as uh, uh, h three of z, which is the uh, uh, h three of n, which is equals to one minus five and six. So when you have it in the equation form, it is written as h three of z, which is equals to summation n equals to zero to two h three of n into z inverse of n. So h three of uh, what do you say z becomes one minus five z inverse plus Uh, one uh, minus five z inverse plus uh, six uh, z is to minus two. So your h three of z turns out to be z square minus five z plus six upon z square. Now the roots of the numerator are uh, when we solve, we get the value as three uh, and two over here. Since the zeros are outside the unit circle, since the value is greater than one, we say that the zeros are outside the unit circle, and hence this is a minimum phase system over here. I guess the numerical the numerical is quite simple over here. Now we will take another question so that it becomes easier for my students. Now the question goes something like that: that suppose your h of z and g of z are rational and have minimum phases. Which of the following filters have minimum phase? You have been given two uh, what do you say set of condition. In one set it is been given as it is uh, h of z into g of z, and another one is h of z uh, plus g of z. Now we need to find that which of the filter has uh, minimum uh, what do you say? Um, minimum uh, phase system. Let h of z, which is equals to z minus 0.5 upon z minus 2, and g of z, which is equals to z minus 0.2 upon z minus 1. So your h of z into uh, we'll take we have taken a simple what do you say numerical. Now since it is being given to us that the, it is a minimum phase system, so the zero will be inside the unit circle. Hence, the value of zero is being considered in such a way that it is less than one over here. So it is uh, over here. It is given as z minus zero point five upon z minus two, and g of z is equal to z minus two upon z minus one. Now h of z into g of z. When you multiply these two, you get a simple equation. Now. If you look over here, the equation one is having zero at zero uh, is having zero uh, out of the pole and zero at uh, zero point five and at zero point two, which is but of course less than one since we were being given that the question is having a minimum phase system. So yes, so h of z into g of z have a minimum phase. Now h of z plus so what do you say g of z? Uh, if you add these two, so. Uh, if you add these two, you will find out that uh, when you uh, open up the brackets and when you solve it, uh, you will get a value which will be no, uh, from this equation over here. All zeros are not inside the unit circle. This one is z over here. It's a printing mistake. Now, as you as you might see uh, from the equation over here, all the zeros are not inside the unit circle. Hence, it is a not a minimum phase system. Hence, this type uh, a, uh, the one which has addition in between of them is uh, what do you say? Not a minimum phase system, but the one which is uh, what do you say? Uh, is a product is a minimum phase system. Now, you have a bit of uh, lengthy numerical, I would say, but it is damn interesting. Trust me, it will uh, clear your doubts when it comes to poles, zeros, and some z inverse uh, and z transforms. Now, 
the pole zero diagram for a function is given as h of n which is equals to 0.5 raised to n uh, your n lies in between 0 to 7 now according to the definition of z transform your h of z is given from summation n equals to minus infinity to infinity h of n into z raised to minus n now since the range of your chotu n is given from 0 to 7 the value of your summation the length of your summation changes from n equals to 0 to 7 h of n into uh, z raised to minus n over here now h of z is equals to summation n equals to 0 to 7 0.5 n into z uh, uh, raised to minus n now h of z is equals to summation n equals to 0 to 7 uh, 0.5 into z raised to minus 1 raised to n now there it is a little bit changed over here here 0.5 n tha. since both of them were raised to some power of n you took n common and you took uh, se minus 1 under liya beta yaha pe sirf 1 rakha upar power mein so it becomes uh, h of z is equals to summation n equals to 0 to 7 0.5 z inverse raised to n now we have a standard summation formula as the summation k equals to 0 to n minus 1 of a of k is given a simple n for your a is equals to 1 and uh, it is given by another formula as 1 minus a raised to n upon 1 minus a for a not equals to uh, what do you say 1. Now here your a is given as 0 0.5 z inverse of uh, minus z inverse that means your a is not equals to 1 so therefore your n minus 1 uh, is 7 so your n turns out to be 8 therefore your h of z turns out to be 1 minus 0 0.5 z inverse raised to 8 upon uh, 1 minus 0.5 z inverse Now, over here, just a moment, huh? converting the equation, uh, what do you say, uh, 4 into positive powers of z, we get h of z, which is equals to uh, z raised to 8 minus 0.5 raised to 8 upon z raised to 8 minus uh, 0 0.5 z raised to 7, which is equals to z raised to 8 minus 0.5 raised to 8. Yaha se z raised to 7 common le liya and z minus 0 0.5. Now, the zeros are obtained by equating the numerator term to 0. So, this term and this term raised to 0. That means z raised to 8, which is equals to 0 0.5 raised to 8. So, therefore, we can now multiply your RHS by e raised to j. 2 pi k since e raised to j 2 pi k is nothing but 1 therefore your z raised to 8 over here is nothing but 0 0.5 raised to 8 into e raised to j 2 pi k your value of k ranges from 0 to 7 you are taking 8th root of both the sides we get z which is equals to 0 0.5 raised to 8 into e raised to j 2 pi k raised to 1 by 8 now your z which is equals to 0 0.5 into e raised to uh, uh, e raised to j 2 pi k upon 8 now we'll put the values of what do you say k from k equals to 0 uh, to k equals to 7 and we'll obtain the magnitude and angles of different zeros as follows for k equals to 0 your z 0 is given by 0 0.5 into e raised to 0 which is nothing but 0 therefore your magnitude is 0 0.5 and your angle is 0 for for k equals to 1 over here, your z1 is equals to 0 0.5 j rest, j into 2 pi upon 8, which is equals to 0 0.5 into j, j pi upon 4. Therefore, your magnitude is equals to 5 and your angle is equals to pi by 4. For k equals to 2, your z2 is given by a certain equation and your final resultant is 0 0.5 j pi by 2. So, your magnitude is 0 0.5 and your angle is uh, pi by 2. For k equals to 3, your magnitude is 0 0.5 and your angle is 3 pi by 2. For k equals to 4, your z4 uh, is equals to 0.5 uh, into uh, e raised to j pi therefore your magnitude is 0.5 and your angle is j therefore uh, when your k is equals to 5 the value of uh, what do you say z5 is nothing but 0.5 into your e raised to j 5 pi by 4 so your magnitude is 0.5 angle is 5 pi by 4 when your k equals to 6 your z6 is equals to 0 0.5 uh, into j into 3 pi by 2 so your magnitude is 0.5 and angle is 3 pi by 2 and last and not the least when your k is equals to 7 your magnitude is 0.5 and your angle is 7 pi by 4 so now when you have that thing into your tabular format this is the equation uh, these are the value uh, uh, these are the different zeros this is a uh, same magnitude that means it is inside the unit circle and this is the angle prescribed now poles are obtained by uh, 
uh, equating the denominator term to zero. Therefore, z raised to seven and z raised uh, z into z minus five, which is equals to zero. Therefore, there are seven poles at z equals to zero. Uh, that is nothing but your origin and one pole at z equals to point five. The pole at uh, what do you say z equals to point five cancels with a uh, zero at z equals to point five. That is nothing but z zero. Therefore, your pole zero diagram is as shown over here. Now. the pole zero diagram is being shown over here so yes this is a simple diagram wherein you need to plot the real part and the imaginary parts over here so yes uh, your z uh, the one which was going to be lying over here it got cancelled with the uh, pole over here so yes it is not being plotted the z zero is not being plotted over here so it is a simple what do you say uh, a pole zero plot of uh, what do you say a minimum phase system now similarly you have some uh, small small numerical to be done now uh, we need to determine uh, let us see what are we facing now uh, we need to determine the zeros to be ek minute ah bachcha now uh, we have been given the question as to determine the zeros of the following fir system and indicate whether the system is minimum phase maximum phase or mixed phase now your first uh, let us see h1 of z is given as 6 plus z inverse plus z is to minus 2 now solution We'll directly go with the question over here. H one of z is given as six plus z inverse plus z is to minus two, which is nothing but six plus one by z plus one by z square. Hence, when you take common z square, we have six z square plus z minus one. Uh, therefore, uh, what do you say? The zeros are at z one equals to zero point three three three, and z two is uh, at uh, what do you say minus zero point five. Since the zeros are inside the unit circle, it is a minimum phase. Uh, what do you say? Uh, Uh, minimum phase system now the poles are at p1 uh, is equals to p2 which is equals to 0 since the poles are also inside the unit circle it is a stable system now we take the second equation we take uh, 1 minus z uh, uh, z inverse minus 6 z uh, raised to minus 2 which is equals to 1 minus 1 upon 2 minus 6 upon z square which is equals to z square minus z minus 6 upon z square therefore the zeros are at z1 equals to 3 and z2 equals to minus 2 Since both the zeros are outside the unit circle, it is a non-minimum uh, phase system. The poles are also at origin, so hence it is a stable system. The third equation we have h1 of z is equals to one minus five by two z inverse minus three by two z raised to minus two, which is equals to one minus five uh, by two z minus three by two z square. So when you take an LCM, the equation turns out to be two z square minus five z minus three upon two z square over here. So. The two zeros are at uh, what do you say? Uh, uh, z1 equals to three and z2 equals to five. Here one zero is inside the unit circle and the another zero is outside the unit circle. So it is a mixed phase uh, system as you would see over here. The poles are at origin, so it is a stable system. Now h1 of z is equals to uh, what do you say? One plus five by three z inverse uh, plus minus two by three z raised to minus two. So when you have the final equation uh, solved, it turns out to be three z square plus five z minus two upon three z square. Now here the zeros are at z1 equals to zero point three 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 and z2 is equals to minus two since. One zero is inside the unit circle, and the another uh, zero is outside the unit circle. It is a mixed system. The poles are at origin, so it is a stable system. H one of z is equals to six plus z inverse plus six z raised to minus two. When you uh, solve the equation, it turns out to be. 6z square plus 6 uh, plus z minus 6 upon z square. Therefore, the zeros since the zeros are at z1 equals to 0.92 and z2 is equals to minus 1.08. Since one zero is inside the unit circle and uh, what do you say another is outside the unit circle, it is a mixed phase system. Now, uh, last e equation we have h4 of z which is equals to 1 minus 5 by 2 z inverse minus 2 by 3 z raised to minus 2. So, on solving and taking the LCM, the equation turns out to be z square. Minus 2.5 z minus 0.67 upon z square. So thus the equations are at z1 equals to uh, 2.7 and z2 equals to minus 0.244. So one zero is outside and the another one is inside the unit circle. So it is a mixed phase system. So yes, this was all up till for uh, minimum and maximum phase numericals. In the next part, we are going to start with some new topic. So up till then, please be stay safe, beta.